Thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a status update as to where we're at with the garage. Um, the uh, vehicles are moving around and I'm putting things in different places and uh, I got bikes in the air and I got gym equipment stashed in places and I've got a whole mess that I'm constantly cleaning and then making into a mess again. So I thought I'd just give you a little clue as to where everything's at and then also give you a status update on some of the vehicles and things that are going on. The vet is currently on the ground instead of up in the air. So what we've been able to do is we've been able to move my wife's Explorer back over to her side of the garage to where she's back on her side and things are there where she needs to be. So this is better for her. It's more comfortable for her to come into the garage this way. She doesn't have to go underneath the lift, navigating between the two columns. And when she's coming in, if she wants to bring in groceries or anything like that, she can just make a straight shot to the garage door and she can get in that way. And it's just so much more convenient for her than having to navigate from the left side of the garage. And for those of you that have been watching the other videos, you know, we had the garage racks that we put up here for the overhead storage. And those are great if you want. I have a video of those being installed by my handyman to get everything taken care of on that side. My wife picked up some kayaks the other day. She's been wanting to add kayaking to her fitness routine. So she's got, of course, two kayaks and they nestle perfectly underneath the lift, give her plenty of room to park the Explorer underneath without having to worry about hitting anything. And if you'll notice, these hooks that it came with work perfect because the handles that you use to carry these around perfectly go on there. These are about 10 foot kayaks. So what they do is they allow for them to pretty much nestle underneath it completely with all the room that we need so that we don't have to worry about them taking up any more garage floor space. For those of you that like doing stuff in your garage, you know how important floor space can be. This area over here, which is, we've got like the dog food and my workbench, is constantly an area that is getting messed and then cleaned and messed and cleaned. I've got these uh, gym mats, which is we use them in the fitness center. These are staging to get back to the studio so that I can get this area cleaned up, but they're out of the way. I can still operate things as I need. I can still navigate. My son likes to park his bike over here and my wife's, you know, she's got multiple bikes depending on what kind of riding she's doing. So this one here is her road bike and I need to get it hung up. I have two more uh, basically pulley systems set up so that we can get her bike hung up and my son's so that it's up and out of the way when they're not in use. Again, giving me back my floor space. This is where her other bike is right now. This is a hybrid. This allows her to kind of do a little bit of everything else, but that's beside the point. As you can see, the pulley system is the way it's set up. It makes it real simple. The bike goes up into the air and it's out of the way. Now this one is here right now. I did have two set up here, but I'm in the process of moving the bikes over to the other side. I wanna get them away from the lift and away from the Jeep. And I wanna put them over here where we've got some pockets where they'll fit perfectly. I'm thinking I'm gonna put a bike over here and then we're gonna hop and I'm gonna put a bike over here. So that way I've got two bikes out of the way and then we'll go from there when it comes time for the third and see how I feel about things. I'm always picking up fitness equipment. So I have a double squat rack over here and I've got a medicine ball rack over here. So these things are things that take up space, but they come and they go. So it's kind of like a blessing and a curse at the same time, but, uh, these should be leaving soon, so that'll create more open space here for me. Having the vet on the ground is nice. The vet sits at 48 inches um, from the top of the roof line. And these ramps, usually I have to take them off when the wife parks her SUV under the lift, when the vet's on top. But these sit at about 57 inches up in the air. 
uh, at the very bottom when they're attached and hanging with the garage door closed. So the vet pulls in right underneath them, gives me plenty of clearance. I just have to remember to turn the radio off because if I don't, I'm going to snag it on here and then bye-bye telescoping radio antenna. The Jeep, I've got the, the hood up on the Jeep. There's not anything wrong with it. Um, I had been tinkering with a few things earlier. I changed out a bunch of the wires. I do have it on a battery tender. So if you notice over here, I've got it plugged in right now. And green means good. So that means I am getting a full charge over here on the battery tender, which if you have vehicles that you like to park and they sit for a while, I definitely recommend getting a battery tender because those are things that are gonna help extend the life of your battery and make sure that you're able to fire it up every single time. Got Mr. Bones on deck over here. He's always ready uh, to keep an eye on things, so shout out to him. This area is somewhat of a mess, somewhat not of a mess. Some of these things I'd like to have go. I am planning on this bumper. It goes to one of my old F-150s, a, a more modern model that I had. I want to actually turn that into a shelf. I thought about keeping this. It's a turntable, an 8-track, a radio, and stuff like that. But I think I'm going to sell this off. These things are kind of garage art. I like to think of it that way. Um, some of the wood for the chiminea. I have the lawn mower on the lift. Uh, the wife had jokingly suggested that I put the mower up there to clean off some floor space, to which I was like, I'm not putting the mower on the lift. And then I was like, you know what? Why don't I put the mower on the lift? So I have it strapped on the front there. That way it doesn't fall off. The back wheels nestle on either side of the lift, but those front wheels aren't staggered as wide. The RX-7 at my buddy's place is due to come home. Now that I have my wife's Explorer back on the other side, I can bring the RX-7 back. The RX-7 will go on the top of the lift. The vet will be on the bottom. When I get the RX-7 up there, that's when I want to start tearing things apart, change out the interior, put a fresh interior in there, seats, um, skins, as well as the new carpet, and then do a few little tinkering things, and it should be all back to good and ready to rock and roll. So I thought I'd give you guys a quick update on the status of the garage. I know some of you have been asking about how things were going, where things are at. Um, I still want to get the electrician in here. I was waiting until I had the lift all taken care of and a few other things, but I'd like to get the electrician in here and I want to have him relocate some plugs for me, add in some outlets, and then I'd also like to add in two fans to help circulate air in here when I need to as well as putting a TV up there in the corner so that I have something that I can have playing while I'm in here. Uh, but for those of you that were interested in where the garage is at, this is where things are. Thank you for watching today's episode of Rob's Garage, giving you a little breakdown of where the garage is with things and what's to come. If you like this episode, leave a comment, hit the like button if you're not already, Subscribe to the channel so that you can catch more videos. All of these things help push the channel through the algorithm and will help bring Rob's Garage to more people in the future.